In the process of creating the documentary, President of Beauty, The Life and Times of Lester Young, I've encountered and interviewed many incredible musicians. A current lack of funding has made the completion of the film a little more difficult. However, there's not a lack of information or content. Here's an interview I hope people find enjoyable with George Ween about his experiences with the late, great Lester Young. More clips of interviews will be posted from artists such as Sonny Rollins, Wayne Shorter, Branford Marcellus, and more. If you find these interviews interesting and would like to support the project, please go to lesterlives.wordpress.com. And thank you for visiting the Lester Lives site. The sound that I miss most in jazz now is the sound of Lester Young and those that were influenced by him. So many people were influenced by Perez, it was unbelievable at that time, you know. Uh, Stan Getz used to, in his hotel room when he was sleeping, he would have Perez records on the table uh, in a little the tapes of Perez solos. And uh, Prez was the last of the melodic players. And um, nobody, nobody plays like that now. You could actually write a song from eight bars of his improvisations. And boy, do I miss that. Now people are improvising. But they're not improvising in, in a melodic way. They're improvising in what they feel is a creative way. And it is creative, and it can be exciting but you're not gonna write a melody from it. And Prez understood song. And boy, do I miss that. I heard the Basie Band uh, very young in my life, and I remember that they were an in, in inspiration and influence on me. Buddy Tate, you know, and, and Joe Jones, and Prez, and, and the, the glamour of watching them on the stage. I can't remember exactly where it was. It must have been either Symphony Hall or Roseland Ballroom in Boston. And the glamour, I mean, it was so glamorous to me. These poor guys were breaking their necks out there for next to nothing, and to me it was glamour. And there was something about the glamour of the big bands. But the posture of the musicians and Prez with his saxophone up in the air, and, and uh, I mean, it was, it was an influence on my life. My first involvement with Prez was in 1954, the first Newport Jazz Festival. And I was a great jazz fan. I, here I am with this young guy putting on this huge festival, which nobody had ever done before. And I had the opportunity to hire who I wanted to hire. And so I decided I wanted to see if I could recreate the Billy Holiday sessions. And I asked Teddy Wilson to play and Joe Jones on drums and Roy Eldridge on, on the trumpet and Milt Hinton on bass. And then I asked Prez to come and play with, with Billy. And we had this little stage at Newport on tennis courts. And we announced Billy and she went up and started to sing and Prez wouldn't get on the stage. Evidently, Prez and Billy had not talked for many years. And I said to Prez, uh, I didn't know him. I, I was this kid. Who was I talking to the president? You know, And um, I said, Prez, aren't you going to get up? Yeah. And he said something. I guess I'll have to help the lady out. And he walked up on the stage and played with her. And evidently, that was the first time in over 10 years they'd played together. And it was very touching and very beautiful. When Prez came to Boston, and I had asked him to come up, in those days he didn't have a group. I can't remember the actual year, it might have been 58, I keep thinking about a year before he died. And he came downstairs and he didn't know me, he remembered me from Newport maybe, I don't know. And. Um, he says, who's going to be on our, our little band, Prez? 
I said, we have Marcus Foster, Boston drummer. He's a good drummer. Lady Marcus, that sounds cool, Press. But he would call me Press because I was the boss. He did not call everybody Press. Everybody was Lady, you know. But uh, I was the boss. I was, I was the boss, so I was Press. And uh, he would call Basie Press, you know. Whoever was the man. I wasn't a great piano player. But I had wanted to hear Prez play n with a non-bebop group. He used to play with Jesse Gray, Jesse Drake, and and uh, uh, had a wonderful piano player. I can't remember his name. But they were bebop. They came out of the bebop era. I wanted to hear Prez back in the swing era, and I didn't play bebop. I played more of a swing feeling. And uh, so uh, I told him Buck Clayton was going to be Lady Clayton. That's a wonderful man. That's cool. That's Prez. And I said, uh, and he says, who's going to be on piano press? I said, well, uh, I, I'll play piano press. You play piano press? Yeah, press. I mean, I, I know your tunes. I think I can play. Well, whatever you say, press. I mean, and this this conversation went on, and we go up on the stage, and I'm and he won't get on the stage. And I says, what do you want to play, press? He says, whatever your feelings, press. I says, um, how about Penny from Penny's from Heaven? She says, cool, Press. I says, what key? You know, whatever you want, Press. I says, um, what tempo? He's not on the stage. And I finally set a tempo, and, and I play a chorus at Press. He says, have another helping, Press. And this goes on. I he, I play four choruses. And he says, you and me are going to be all right, Pris. And my, my, whole, my whole heart just started beating so fast. I mean, because uh, he would have gone back to New York. And so uh, uh, we had a ball all week. Whenever he wanted to set a tempo, he said, let's play Indianapolis. Indianapolis is Indiana at a fast tempo. Yeah. A few things I remember, I said, well, uh, Lady Bass, you take the next helping, and then we'll follow the swallow back home. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is, he was the swallow. And all of these things just were memorable in my life. And uh, I, I, I consider that one of the most fun moments in my entire life. He influenced uh, all the conversations of people like Monk, who had his own way of talking, but that was influenced by Pres, Bird and, and Dexter Gordon, and they always talked, and, and they wanted to say things you didn't quite understand that had double meanings, and you had to understand the, the both meanings to understand what they were saying. And, and Pres, Pres was the real creator of that. I brought him up to Newport once after that, <clears throat> Charlie Carpenter was standing with him off stage, and, and uh, we had a group. I forget who the group was, and Prez was set to play with that group. And it was one of the saddest moments I've ever heard. And, and Prez gets ready to go on stage and says, I guess I have to go and audition again. He was so down at that point that we were trying to find something left. And so to him, it was just another audition to be heard. And this was at the very, towards the very end. And um, I remember that. I remember how sad he was even at that time. He says he didn't know what to play because as soon as he played something, the kiddies the next day were playing his notes right back at him. And he was kept searching for uh, a different sound. So he didn't sound the same in 1958 that he sounded in 1938, you know. It was a real lightness to his play. There was a heavier playing, heavier sound, but the melody was still there. Prez was an artist. Prez was a delicate human being. He was an artist and, 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 and a, 
had a mentality and an intellect that very few people in the history of the world have had. So, I mean, it, Prez, to me, Prez was music. And um, that, that's what I miss.